they were sent there as a colony by the American Colonization Society. Similar to what happened to the Titan colonies from Britain, you know. And that was the reason why they wanted to take care of them over there. But back in, in about 1835, 1836, the American Colonization Colon 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 Society went broke, they went bankrupt. And there was no money to keep these people up. And America at that time did not want to support them. But when the society decided in 1846, I said, look guys, you are not getting much help from the great United States. Why don't you become independent? And that was what happened when Liberia became independent in July 26, 1847, becoming the first African country in Africa to be free. So there is definitely a lot of beauty in being a Liberian. Um, there's just so many things that we had to overcome. As you can see, it stems from not just being African, but being slaves that went back. And not only that, it was a mixed culture of people. Um, from just doing research myself, there were also Native Americans that went to Liberia. So it's just like a melting pot, almost like America. So it's really a beautiful country. Um, I really want to start talking about the Liberian War. Um, what caused the Liberian Civil War? The Liberian Civil War. The Liberian Civil War. The Liberian Civil War. Oh. <laughs> wow, okay. The Liberian Civil War, uh, which actually started in, uh, in uh, 1989, of December, actually, 1989. But there are causes that led to that. But the root cause of the Liberian Civil War dates back from the time our brothers and sisters went back to Liberia. Mm. That's the root cause. That's when it started. You may want to know why. Yes, I said that. When our brothers and sisters were free from here and sent back home, and they arrived there in 1822, uh, like Rob said, through the, uh, through the uh, American Colonial Society, they landed there, fine. And like he correctly stated, these people were not born there, they were born here, and when they went back home, they went home with different names. And when they went home, they met brothers and sisters, they were there. In our uh, language back home, we call them the indigenous. They met the indigenous in Liberia. So when they met the indigenous, and why did I say that root cause started from that time? When they met the indigenous, instead of, the indigenous were very nice people, they embraced them. Well, what did they get in return? How they were treated here, they started to imply the same treatment against the indigenous. So they posed up, wait a minute. <laughs> I, I told you came back home for us to all live together in peace. But they were ill-treated. There were no, uh, I mean, just similar to everything that you can think of that the uh, black American were treated here in America, talking about uh, 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 not allowing uh, intermarriages, uh, interracial marriages and things like that, and uh, inequality in, in, in the political arena, whatever it was, they, uh, they exerted those same practice on the people, on the indigenous. So, it wasn't that inequality went on for so long and it started to brood little by little, little by little, start bringing about different indifference among the people and things like that. So that went on for a long time until later on in, the, in, 19, in 1944 when the, the late President William B. S. Tuckman came into you know, the, uh, the, the presidency. He at least tried to open up little by little, bringing about uh, allowing the indigenous to take part into government, you know, and all those kind of things. So, 
and bringing about the uh, the open door policies and all, all the stuff. So that kind of helped a little bit to ease the problem. Not that uh, they didn't have that uh, political thing going on very strongly, but at least it was kind of controlled in a way because they felt that it would at least be assimilated into the you know into the program in some way. It was being respected. So that went on. That kind of Ease the problem. Then came, of course, after Tuckman, then William Tarbot, who was his, was Tuckman vice president for 19 years. When he took over in 1971, uh, after the death of uh, William B. S. Tuckman in uh, London Clinic in uh, Great Britain, Tarbot took over. When Tarbot took over. His vice president, like I said, for 19 years. When he took over, he tried to bring about other things that would bring about fast development, empowering the people, you know, opening up more education, more institutional things. So that started to work. And then, of course, Liberia, uh, for a long time, especially during the Turkmen era, was one party, you know, system for government. But it's, it didn't start like that. When it started, it was the same thing here. You have the Republican mm -hmm. and the Democrat. Mm -hmm. You know that changed later on to get grip on the uh, on, on the system. So it ended up to a one-party system, which lasted for so long. Again, that was another problem that caused you know, that, that, that caused the problem. Uh, started the, uh, the, 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 the disruption in the country. But to fast forward, so Tobal brought about more. Uh, the allowing the uh, possibility of another party system. Then, of course, the uh, PPP the, uh, came about the uh, the PAC, you know, uh, back in those days, led by Gabriel Bar Barclay Matthews. And uh, so, after that, after after the PPP were allowed to allow to to, to, to establish the uh, a party, you know. A, a, a form of a party system, they were not registered uh, uh, as, uh, as a, a bona fide. It, it was, actually, it was registered, but however, they were not like a party itself, but it was a movement, in other words. So that went on, and then, of course, led to our first major riot, which was termed the Rice Riot. You know, the Rice is the Liberia's tip of whom. And uh, so, that's another long story to, to go into. But that's how they capitalized on that to let the people know that uh, they, they were not being treated fairly and they were, they were, they, uh, that the Torba government was actually uh, not only trying to use, they were trying to use that uh, 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 promoting the rights so that they can enrich themselves. But that was far from the truth. The truth was that because the rights was a table for the government at the time used to subsidize the rights. But what the people didn't know, and that is at the fault of the government, they didn't educate the people to let people know how the rights was being subsidized. So it came to a time that uh, the uh, late Minister of Agriculture at the time, Chinua, made a proposal, my or just a proposal, to say that we are considering the increase of rice price to from 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 eighteen dollars to twenty dollars, from eighteen dollars to twenty dollars, and the uh, the, uh, the the opposition decided to capitalize on that to tell the people that uh, look, uh, this country is so rich that every individual in Liberia can be given a million dollars and then we still have surplus. That's how naive the people were because they were not informed. So the, the opposition was able to influence them to do to 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 to, uh, to understand that uh, there is a way that the country is so rich that we can do, we can make a way to you know, to improve your life, but other than that, these people, the, the top administration were just about enriching themselves and not actually looking after you. So, the rest riot came in 1979, you know, and uh, some people got killed from that. 
Then, of course, 79, that actually led to trouble problem nationally. But he had other problem. The other problem was that America's relationship with Liberia is so, so strong. At, at the time, it was the time of the Cold War back in the days. And so uh, Liberia didn't have any kind of relationship with the communist world. And if you were friendly with, like, with America, you couldn't, you couldn't have anything to do with China. You couldn't have anything to do with Russia, you know, during the Cold War. That's where that, that happened. So Torbrook decided that he going to befriend the Russian. So he got the Russian involved in Liberia. He got the Chinese involved and all the different communist countries and, and uh, Romania. And all this going to be very helpful to Liberia at the time because I remember back in the day when I was there, Russia was giving so many scholarships to Liberian uh, students to go study uh, uh, medicine. Romania was doing the same thing in you know, other, other parts as well. So they frowned upon that. That's why that actually was, was, was a question on his kid that sucked his downfall. So 1980 led to our first coup. Well, not actually the first coup because the first bloody coup, let me put it that way. So the first bloody coup happened in 1980 when Toro was assassinated and other people. And then later off, of course, uh, taking of our uh, of his government ministers were all put to the pool and executed for rampant corruption and, uh, uh, and all kind of issues that you didn't talk about at the time. Then, of course, the, uh, the army that took over, led by Master Sergeant Samuel, Samuel Doe, and uh, from 1980, April 12, 1980, that went on for some time until he started to, and he was very much 